Well, this is uh, another work, another uh, project we are working. This is in collaboration with uh, two colleagues from the University of Geneva. Uh, uh, Edgar Francisco is up here. Yeah, he's, uh, he's the main author of this paper. Um, what we are trying to do is something that similar to what we are doing with the artifacts, but we are trying to, we are trying to apply also some of those techniques to class to try to develop a, an automatic system to classify pottery shapes. Uh, and for this, we are using uh, now a, a common model in computer vision, which is called back of words. This is, uh, now it's a, it started a few years ago, but now it's quite common in computer vision to use it. <laughs> so uh, this was a model developed to classify text automatically. So for, uh, for example, the idea was that you, uh, you have, for example, a corpus of documents, and you statistically measure the frequency of certain words, that that frequency will tell, will allow you to guess the contents of the of the text of the books, for example. So if you have a, enough number of books and you analyze the, the frequency of words in all this corpus, then you can uh, deduce the the contents, the topics uh, in that in that book. So that's what uh, the model was developed for originally. Um, so in this case, you first, to, to, to do the analysis, the statistical analysis, you need to uh, compile a dictionary of, dictionary of words. So that's a very important concept in this model, to have a dictionary of the words that are important. So for example, if you want to, to uh, uh, you want to classify a, a, a library, and you want to, have, to, to, to extract the books that talk about politics, well, you are going to focus on certain words. You are going to disregard all the words, the articles, for example, which are common to all texts, and you are going to also disregard all the very, very specific words that have only one or two occurrences in the whole corpus. So uh, that's uh, uh, it's going to be more common if you have a, a, a book talking about politics. It's maybe more more frequent in that book to find words that uh, say party or congress, and in one book of biology you will find completely different words. Uh, then through a, there is many techniques to actually uh, analyze the contents once you have the dictionary or the, the vocabulary. One of the techniques is called Latin semantic analysis, which basically is a, a, a technique that uses correlation. and uh, and uh, and to guess the the frequency of words in the in the document. Then you apply you you obviously have a training set of documents, and then uh, the the machine learns that what is the frequency of words in every kind of document. For example, in a, in a document of politics, it, it has to learn which words are more frequent in those texts, and in a text of biology also. Uh, 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 during this training phase, you, uh, like the computer will learn which vocabulary is more frequent. So we, some people extrapolated this idea to computer vision, to the 2D image analysis. And, uh, and then uh, now more recently it's been applied to the 3D analysis, to the model of 3D analysis. The mod analysis of 3D models. Um, so in image classification, the idea is this, uh, you have, for example, images, and you extract some features, which are the equivalents to words, and these words are called, these, these features are called piece terms, visual words, or text tones. In the case, we have these three images, these three textures, and you can see, um, you, you can see here, for example, that these are three features, that are frequent in this image. It's, these are different, three different images with three different. This can be the equivalent to words in a document. And the the uh, the professor who proposed this model 
created this set of images. These these are two the images, and these are the this is the, the vocabulary of features extracted from this collection of, of images. If with with all these features, with the with the anal statistical analysis of the frequency of each one of these features, uh, is is able the system she developed is able to recognize if an image comes from a landscape or from a urban uh, picture or a car. So, so this is a this model is quite uh, is proven to work very well in the case of 2D images. So just to give you an intuitive idea of what we are trying to do with 3D models, is imagine that you have these three models. Imagine these are these cultures are 3D models. Mm -hmm. And then we extract some features. Obviously the, the images here that I put is just to get an intuitive idea, but we don't extract features of such a high high level, we, we extract the equivalence to this, right? But in 3D. But just to give you an idea, you have features that are common in certain kind of sculptures, and you put it in, a, you created a dictionary of all those features. And then you, with those dictionaries, you, you can see, for example, this sculpture, how many of, of the feature number one has, how many of the feature two, Etc. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the, the idea here that I'm trying to to the idea I try to convey to you is that, for example, these Greek sculptures have similar features, whereas the the this Mexican sculpture has completely different histogram. In that in the in the last sculpture, the the features, the more frequent features are different. So that's the idea behind the bag of words model. It's very, it's very simple idea, and it's based on only on counting features. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, you can, uh, when you have another sculpture, a query sculpture like this one, you can compare its feature, its, its bag of words, which is similar to this one and is not similar to the Greek sculptures. So that's what we are trying to do, but we are going to do with the uh, pottery sheds. Obviously, the model it can be applied to artifacts as well, and probably will work even better. And it's part of the, the, pre the previous presentation, it uses also this model. So this is the, the way to do it. We, again, we select on the, in the 3D model, we select a sample of points, uh, probably 10,000 or 20,000 points on the software of one model, then extract some descriptor. We are going to talk about the local, igual the same local descriptors and then extract the dictionary. So when we have a lot of, the, of these features in the model, these geometric features, then we, we created a dictionary of the most common and most frequent features for the whole collection of, of artifacts. And then uh, create the histogram for each model. So one, the, the, the point detection point, uh, the point detection phase in this work is important because uh, uh, in the case of text, we know the work is the unit, the analysis unit. But in in in, in, a, in a three D model, we have to select points, um, so sometimes random points. But in this case, we use the difference of Gaussian's filtering algorithm, which in two D is very common. We have it in Photoshop, for example, when we try to do this kind of thing. Uh -huh is using that technique different of Gaussians, but in 2D, we use it in 3D. Mm -hmm. So you, it's, it's simply a technique to uh, enhance and to reveal the more, uh, the more um, uh, salient features in the 3D model. So it, it takes analysis of the edges, blobs, uh, valleys, in the, that are strong changes in the geometry of the model, basically. And so uh, we apply some algorithms to extract some local des uh, shape descriptors. We use one which is very, very common, the scale invariant feature transform, SIFT. Um, and basically what this descriptor does, uh, this is a paper, origin a, a picture of the, the original paper. You can see that it's a technique to recognize objects in very clouded, uh, uh, very uh, scenes that are very busy. For example, we have the frog. You can see the frog here. You can distinguish. <laughs> and 
the program using the, that algorithm, the program is able to identify that here is one of these the, the, the frog, the query model. And the, this little train is, is, a, is over, over here. Mm -hmm. So it's what it sees does. Then we have another, which is spin images. It's another very common descriptor, which basically takes a point and then it's like it slices the model on that point and takes the, the profile of the shape and that is what quantifies for the, for the descriptor. Um, so again, we have uh, our, our models. This is the, the pipeline. Uh, we, we do uh, the detection of points, the feature extraction, the dictionary learning. We store the dictionary. Then is the, the document representation. Every model is represented as a bag of words, or a bag of features. And then we have the, in, the, in the lower part of the graphic, we see the query process, which is just in reverse. And these are our experiments with, with shares. Uh, this again, graphic, graphically, you see here the, the database. Then we have these features around the, the shares. We, we extract the descriptors. Then those descriptors are, are clustered to learn the dictionary, or the most common for, for every model. And we created histograms for each model, for each uh, share, for share. And then we have these experiments. Uh, we have, a, a, for example, this is one query object, and this is the recovery. We are working with a very small sample at the moment, which is just starting this project. Uh, and again, we, we are planning to do probably a virtual fracture. We, we are planning now to use models of, of complete base vessels and then to do uh, an, a random breaking, virtual breaking of the, of the bus vessels to learn more about the shapes, to increase also our database. This is another of the queries that we are using. Again, it's very very small sample, and also we have uh, with this uh, experiment we have few different classes, but there are some classes that are very badly represented in the sample. So we are having very low uh, uh, level of results here, very low performance. Then we we do when we standardize the size of the of the classes and we improve our results. And uh, this graph, uh, the best, the idea is that it's be totally red and this totally blue, but we're still not there. <laughs> it's just, it's, we are still working uh, a lot on, on that. Uh, but the idea is that is, is to use bag of words to learn, uh, to distinguish, for example, a ring from a base and to different uh, rings from different uh, types of vessels, for example. So that's the idea behind this project. Uh, we, we are still working on that. Mm -hmm. no, no, you want to say something? No, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, open to questions. Thank you very much.